Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on troubleshooting connectivity with hardware. Today I'm going to discuss what makes a cable bad, uh, cable testing tools, and I'm going to conclude with some additional tools. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin with what makes a cable bad. Network cables can go bad or be bad without any visible indication. Alternatively, a cable may be inappropriate for a particular application. It can be difficult to visually tell if cables are wired correctly and or a break in the wire may not be visible. Both of these will cause problems. Additionally, anything that makes the cable fall out of specification will make it a bad cable. How long is the cable? Is it over the maximum length? Is the cable rated for the amount of data being run over the wire? All of these are questions that can be answered using the proper tools. It's time to discuss cable testing tools. First up is the multimeter. It can be used to test for breaks in copper wiring. Good network cables have a very low resistance value from one end of the cable to the other. By the way, your resistance is measured in ohms. A high or infinite ohms value indicates a break in the cable. So you can use multimeters to test for continuity to make sure that traffic can flow from one end to the other. Crimpers are not a testing tool per se, but they are used for attaching cable ends onto cables, which if you suspect you have a bad cable end or a miswired connector, you're going to need a set of crimpers. It can either be specific to a particular type of cable end, or it may work for more than one type of cable. And by the way, it's not uncommon to need to replace the ends of twisted pair wiring cables. Every network technician should have a cable tester or cable certifier. These can be either fairly simple or very complex. Cable testers will test for continuity in the wire as in is there a break. Cable testers will also test for proper pinouts. Are all the wires in the right places? Some will test for the wiring standard. Is it wired for the T568A standard or the T568B standard or have you created a crossover cable? Cable certifiers are a little bit more complex but they will also test for more network related items they can test the speed of the wire. They can test for duplex settings between two endpoints. Cable certifiers are used to certify a given network segment. Toner probes are another handy tool. They're usually a two-piece set. They have an injector which places a signal onto the wire and a probe which detects the signal and emits a tone when it detects that signal. These are also sometimes called a fox and hound. They're used to find and trace wires. They're useful when having to replace a single wire in a bundle of wires. You can place the injector on one end to figure out which wire it is at the other end. Then there is the time domain reflectometer. This is a cable tester or certifier that can also determine the length of a segment. They can also tell where a break is in a segment, which can then allow you to put in a splice. They are more expensive than a standard cable tester or certifier. Related to the TDR is the optical time domain reflectometer, or the OTDR. They perform the same function as a TDR, but it is used for fiber optic cabling. It is often called a light meter, as it can measure the quantity and quality of the light going through a fiber optic cable. Some other thoughts on cable testing tools. Unless your job entails mostly installing cabling, the most important tools are the cable tester, crimper, and toner probes. Personally, I have never been able to justify the cost of a TDR. I have used them, but I've rented them instead of purchased them. Most of the time, you can make do with inexpensive tools. However, spending more on certain tools will usually save time and money in the long run. An exception to the inexpensive tool rule are toner probes. 
inexpensive toner probes can be difficult to work with or they just don't work at all. I would recommend stepping up and spending a little bit more for your toner probe. Try to strike a balance between cost and effectiveness. You can spend thousands of dollars on some of these tools, especially TDRs and OTDRs, and never utilize them to their fullest potential. The next topic is additional tools. And we will begin with the wireless analyzer. It is a similar tool to the protocol analyzer, but it is used for wireless networks. It sniffs out packets on wireless networks. This information can be used to help solve wireless connectivity issues. A wireless analyzer can also perform other functions. It can check for bandwidth usage, channel usage, top talkers, and top listeners. It can identify networks by passively scanning the radio frequency channels. It can identify hidden networks if given enough time, and a wireless analyzer can also infer non-beaconing networks based on data traffic, so it can help you to find those rogue access points. Then there are looking glass sites, or LG sites. These are publicly available sites that can be used to view routing information remotely, as viewed from the LG servers point of view. They create a read-only portal on which routing statistics can be generated and viewed. LG sites can be helpful in determining if the connectivity issue is occurring because of problems on the local network or if the remote connection is the issue. That concludes this session on troubleshooting connectivity with hardware. I talked about what makes a cable bad, I talked about cable testing tools, and I concluded with some additional tools. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.